Mm -hmm. And here is Glenn Rhodes, one of our scientists yeah, taking samples. And it's heavily contaminated yeah. with the map bug. When this material dries out, uh, trucks come and yeah. load it up yeah. and dump it back onto farmland, creating a cycle of environmental yeah. contamination. Yeah. We found it in the accumulated sediment in a small proportion of domestic water. Yeah. This is the estuary of the beautiful river we've just seen. You can see that it runs out into a broad sandy bay. This heavily cont map contaminated river meets the incoming tide in a brisk southwesterly wind and more aerosols are generated that can spread for miles. We also found the map bugs in the clean water treatment of human domestic sewage plants, where this water is, flows into reservoirs, yeah. which are themselves used for domestic supply. It enables the map organisms to cycle within human populations. And these are map bugs from humans, <coughs> which are living within environmental organisms. Yes for at least four years. Crohn's disease yes. is a new disease. It really began about the middle of the 20th century yes. and thereafter has continued to climb. It is now spreading. We've already seen what Yoni's disease is doing mm -hmm. and it appeared about, uh, about the turn of the century. Yeah. Crohn's disease appeared about this time here about 40 to 50 years between the two. In the crowded continents of Europe and North America, with the humans moving and the animals moving and all different nationalities, this time relationship was not seen. But there is one place where it was very clearly seen, and that is the isolated community of Iceland. Here's Iceland in the North Atlantic. Before 1930, there was no map, no Yoni's disease and no Crohn's disease. And then, in 1933, the inevitable happened. They unknowingly imported 20 map-infected sheep from Germany. They were quarantined for six months and remained quite healthy. And they were sent to 14 farms. It took five years for the first case of Yoni's disease. By 1950, there was an epidemic. It took 12 years for the disease first to appear in the cattle. And by 1960, yes. there was an epidemic. In 1960, the incidence of Crohn's disease in the Icelandic population yes. was 0.45 per 100,000 people. And by 1992, it had peaked at 8.2 yeah, per 100,000 this, this is an 18-fold increase. So in 1933, they imported a specific cause of chronic inflammation of the it intestine. Is. And it developed sequentially an epidemic of chronic inflammation of the intestine in the sheep, in the cattle, and in the people. And the gap between these two was about 50 years about the same as the interval between the emergence of Yoni's disease in Europe and North America and the emergence of Crohn's disease in Europe. We predict about 40, well, 40 to 50 years. Yes, so you predict now 40 years for China? No. Oh. We predict that this interval yes. is getting smaller uh -huh. because the map bug is getting more virulent for humans. Uh -huh. The map bug is changing and getting more virulent. So we we know that hu that map bugs are being transmitted to humans. This is a photograph of the inflamed intestine of somebody with Crohn's disease, and those fingers are mine. And the question is, is map present in this inflamed intestine? This has been a difficult question to answer. 
they cannot be seen under the microscope. There are many of them. They are very difficult or impossible to culture. Then for DNA tests, they are very difficult to break open, to release their DNA. And an example of this, this is the culture of map from a car in about six months. Under the microscope, they're all, as we have seen, red staining organisms in clumps. This is map cultured from human, and this has taken about a year to culture originally. Under the microscope, we, we do see some typical red staining map bugs, but only after the culture has been incubated for many months. The form of map that first appears are these tiny little ghost-like organisms. And that, we are looking at the form of the map bug in humans that you can't see, that, you, that hides from the immune system, that's very, very tough and is very difficult to grow in culture. And in this clump, we see an accumulation of the blue types or the blue-gray types which come first and then the red ones which come later. We develop methods that are reliable for detecting map in humans. This pink is a fresh biopsy obtained during a colonoscopy in somebody with Crohn's disease. This liquid is a mixture of detergents and a strong enzyme. And this at the bottom here is a slurry of silica particles. We incubate it for two hours and the sample disappears. The human tissue is dissolved, but the map bugs are not. To release the map DNA, we have to put it in this instrument and close the lid and turn it on. And this spins round. The tube gets hot from, from the collision of the silica particles. And it smashes the map bugs open and releases their DNA. And then when you do the map test very carefully, this is what we find. Two and, two and three are, are controls to show there's no contamination. Mm -hmm. Seven and eight are controls to show that the solutions are not no, contaminated. Seven. Nine and ten show that the test is working properly. No. And four the terminal ileum, the small intestine from somebody with Crohn's, yeah. and five, the colon of somebody with Crohn's, oh. and six, the sigmoid colon on the left-hand side of someone so with four Crohn's. Five. Extensive infection throughout the gut oh. with Mycobacterium avium subspecies paratoblacolosis. Yes. There have been a lot of studies uh, done on this in the 1990s and there was a disagreement about the results. About half said that map bugs were in Crohn's disease, and about half said they couldn't find them. In the cases that couldn't find them, it was nearly always because the methods were not right.